Oh, I got it. Been waiting a little while to share this one. This took place during North Carolina's bluefin tuna season, which happens during the winter here. This day was very, very abnormal. The tuna fishing was really good this day, extremely rare. There's a lot of times the whole fleet goes and nobody catches one, or maybe there was one bite or two bites out of all the boats out there, but there were plenty of fish to go around this day. Pretty special day. had some crud on my camera lens, but I got that cleaned off. You'll just have to bear with me for this one clip. You can see right there, Jackie is rigging up a ballyhoo that we're gonna put out there and troll for these bluefin. Sometimes we fish with live bait, sometimes we fish with ballyhoo, just depends on what is going on. We also had some live bait with us this day in the event that we needed it. Once you get your stuff out, tuna fishing is a lot of waiting. Fortunately, with the power of editing, you don't have to sit through all of this, but we did troll for a little while without any bites. And uh, then we saw a little bit of activity that made us think we should try putting a live bait out. So we did that and I'll uh, put that in here next. You'll see what happens when we did that. You'll notice there's not a whole lot of excitement in the boat. Uh, this fish was acting much less spirited than a bluefin. We were pretty sure that it was not, but you always got to keep that hope alive because sometimes they'll act kind of funny at first before they realize what's going on. But yeah, you'll see what this ends up being. Crack some. <coughs> what's he fighting? Oh, sorry. I didn't hear you. Yep, so that's one of the unfortunate realities of using live bait is that you're going to encounter a lot of sharks. Makes it kind of challenging. So we went back to the troll right after we had that happen.
I did. Walk it down. Sorry. My brother's quick actions saved us on that one. He had to back the drag down and pick the rod up to run around the bow, keep that line out of the motors. I was just trying to move the rod to steer the fish away from the motors, and you can't do that with a big bluefin. Uh, they don't they don't let you steer the rod if your drag is set where it needs to be to catch them. Ready? Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Hopefully just him, not any other creatures. I'm wearing these big gloves because my hands have horrible circulation and they get cold really easily. It was pretty cold out there this morning. I don't remember how cold, but that's why I've got those gloves on. And I end up taking them off during the fight because fighting a bluefin will make you warm up a little bit. Can they do anything? You want to jump on this? I'm gonna shed some layers. Yeah. It, like, are we good? Yeah, I got too much on right now. <laughs> so basically, we are under the impression that the fish on the right is not that big. They got to be 73 inches for us to keep one. And we know the fish on the left is big because he's taking so much line. But we start to kind of realize that fish on the right, he's kind of pulling a little harder than we thought. Sure fish is trying to turn me away from my thing. Okay. You mind my that?
You want to move that rod? Pushes up more. I got it above the button now. Okay. Which is a lot on that reel, I think. Go ahead. Um, are y'all holding a keeper? We are in the gray with one. I'm locked. It kind of feels that way. Yeah, I thought that one felt pretty good. So you can see the fish is now straight up and down. He's doing what is called pinwheeling, which just means he's got his body turned broadside to the boat and he's doing really, really big circles down there. And that means the fish is starting to get tired, but the fight is far from over. Here you go. Got Bigger than the one y'all hooked the other day? Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. It hasn't stopped. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Again. Our best explanation for what must have happened here was that we think a shark swam and touched the braid while it was under a lot of pressure and it cut that braid because it broke very, very far ways away from the fish. We lost a lot of line and the line was almost new. You didn't get to see it in the video, but we could see lots of sharks swimming around the boat the whole time. Broke. Well, I'm not far. Huh? You're like real close, aren't you? Yeah. He's probably black back and that's why we can't see him, right? Probably. Yeah, I see him. All right, we got color, Jackie. All right. Straight gaffing, pulling the fish. We're going to be quick from the transition of gaffing to in the boat. Okay. okay. Holy f what a bite on the jig. I got it on video. Swivel. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. God, can you imagine how big the other one was? That one I just hooked on the jig was no f***ing slouch. <laughs> no. Damn, this is no slouch here either. Holy Y'all better hang on. Did I stick him? Yeah. Oh, oh, nope, it didn't go into him. I don't want to... Back. Back to drive off. 
So what you're seeing is definitely not standard practice. Normally you want to leave these fish in the water, put them on what's called a swim hook, and let that fish swim in the water to let the lactic acid in their muscles dissipate. We didn't have that luxury because you can't take a high quality fish to market if there is no fish to begin with. Some people had had some giant bluefins getting eaten by sharks. Normally they leave the big bluefins alone, but shark behavior is changing in North Carolina. We heard stories from a guy who lost two fish back to back. The first one, he put it on the swim hook and the sharks came and devoured it. The second one, he didn't even get it on the swim hook. As soon as he stuck the gaff in the fish, the fish got sharked. We had seen, you didn't see it on video, but we could see lots of sharks swimming around, uh, all fired up around the boat the whole time while we were fighting this fish. So we did not want to take any chances. So we did our best just to get the fish in the boat, cut his gills, get him bled out, dump water through his gills, doing what we could given the situation and got him cooled down as quick as we could. If you're still watching at this point, you'll notice that magically a couple outfits have changed and the fish got bigger. Um, I didn't get any footage of the fish that we caught that day that you just watched being weighed and processed uh, when we take it to the dock. But I jumped on the boat on a different day when Wyatt and Jackie were on their way in and uh, got to film that process so I could tack that onto the end of the video. So this is exactly what happens with every tuna, but it's just not the fish that you saw get caught. So this fish is starting whole when we get to the dock. His fins are going to get cut off, head's going to get cut off, guts are coming out, and then eventually the tail will get cut off. You won't see that happen in this one because they need a handle to be able to pick him back up out of the ice bath that he goes into. But when you get all of that taken care of, that's what's called a core, and when a buyer buys the fish, uh, that's what they pay for. Their price per pound is for the core, not for the whole fish. If you've ever watched Wicked Tuna, uh, those prices you see on there, they're not fake, but it's a number that is not actually the number that the fisherman is getting paid. It's pretty hard to make money tuna fishing. There's not many people that are making much money doing it, and there's a lot of people losing money doing it from what I have seen and observed in my time down here. But this is a cool little window into the bluefin tuna fishery here, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I have at least one more coming up after this, so stay tuned.
guess he was just too big. They gave up. I don't know. Strange. Yeah. Put the tailpiece from the other one in the ice room. Okay. So they can forget it for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That smell was awful. I got more ice. I got it on. Donnie loads up and smells out of it. What do on the old rig? Mmm. Yummy. Mm. Yeah, I can fish with this. That's why I'm getting it. Marbling. This is called a tail cut. Bluefins are judged, the quality of the fish is judged based on what this tail cut looks like. So this is very important for the buyer to see. I think what happens is these tail cuts get photographed on these paper plates and then the potential buyer looks at the photographs, but I'm not sure. I always just wondered, I don't know, like I can't just look at it and really know. But yeah, I was honestly kind of wondering about what Okay, good there. Yep. Stop. Yes. Oh yeah. Good guess, Jack. I get the wood. Four twenty. Four twenty. Drop down. Drop down. You okay? Oh, I'm fine. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. 